Yo, what up, everybody? What up, what up, what up? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Good evening. Good evening. Hey. Yo. Hey, y'all. Okay. Okay, y'all. What up, what up, what up? How y'all doing? Okay, listen. I know I'm a little late. You know, uh, my bad for that. Check me out, right? You know, it, it's been a busy time. I was tired, fell asleep. And uh, woke up a little late. So, but we're going to go ahead and get into this. We're we going to get started. So check me out, right? This is a hashtag get real woke discussion on vetting before you spin. This is a discussion on vetting before you spin. Now, if y'all saw my, um, uh, y'all saw my story you know, I posted that uh, at 7 p.m. tonight, uh, I was most definitely going to be exposing a financial company that is purporting itself to be an expert. Now, you know, that is definitely going to be happening tonight. That is, that is happening. So we're doing that. But what this really is, to be honest with y'all, is a teachable moment. This is a lesson uh, on on doing your due diligence before you spend money with anyone uh, that, that you come across on social media. You know, one of the things I always say is do not let social media cause you to lose everything you've worked so hard for. I say that all the time. And so now... We have a good example of what I am talking about. Okay, so we go ahead and get right into this, right? So for this, for this right here, I gotta turn my camera around. I gotta turn my camera around. Let's start. Okay, so first, who who are we talking about here? What what's going on? What what's the backstory? Okay, so today we are going to be exposing Black Wealth Live. Now, here's the thing, right? When you look at Black Wealth Live, you see they've got 1,737 posts, 242,000 followers, right? So this looks like a page, you know, based on the title, Black Wealth Live, right? Based on the title that you see there, of course, we, we know they're talking about something in the space of financial literacy, right? So we know they're talking about something in that space. Now... I have been following this page for a while, and I've been noticing some questionable content that they post. And so, you know, there was one thing specifically that they posted, and I come a, and I and I came across this once before, and I spoke on it. And you know, of course, they didn't they didn't respond, they didn't say nothing. Well, this time, you know, when they posted it again. The guy decided to go back and forth with me, right? He decided to that he was going to try to, I guess, defend the position, which really he didn't even defend the position. And we're going to see what happened here, right? So, so let's, what am I talking about? What, what am I talking about that they posted? I'll show you. So here's what they posted. They said, did you know business credit can be established and developed from day one without personal guarantor? Comment paydex below for more details. Okay, so this is inaccurate, right? This is an inaccurate statement. So, of course, I got a notification when they posted it, and this is what I wrote. I said, I spoke to this before, right? So, I'm going to read you what I wrote, right? I basically said, I spoke to this lie before, but I will do so again. A paydex score is established by setting up an account for your business with Dun & Bradstreet. However, you have to build credit on a business the same way you would personally. Moreover, not all business credit accounts report to Dun's because they don't pay for the access to do that. Even the business creditors that do, do not do this automatically. You have to ask them to. Moreover, a newly established business will require a personal guarantor from the bank, period. 
and the business will still have to qualify for the loan under standard underwriting procedures and guidelines which weigh the five C's of lending in the underwriting process. It takes time to develop a business to a level that it can establish credit facilities without a guarantor. Stop lying to people. So, that was my comment, right? That's, that's my comment. I immediately dealt with that. Immediately. Because see, the problem that we have, right, in our community, and it's very important, is that you have people that come along, right, and they try to, to, to put out information because they know that financial literacy knowledge in our community is extremely low. And so they read a couple of things somewhere, right? They heard a thing somewhere and all of a sudden now they're setting up these pages on social media and they're claiming an expertise that they do not have, right? And they're putting out bad information and then they're charging people for it. And that is extremely bothersome for me. So at this point, which is why I started the hashtag get real woke movement, why I started the hashtag for the free movement to begin with is to counteract this foolery with facts, right? From someone who actually has credentials, experience, a background in this business, the knowledge, right? And the execution ability to be able to put this information out the right way. Now, what happened next? Immediately upon me posting this, right? The guy, and I'm actually pulling up the messages right now. It's hilarious. I ain't gonna go through all of them because it was a lot, right? But this is his immediate response. His immediate response is, dude, shut up. Okay, are we children? Are we children? He says, dude, shut up. You spent all this time ranting. We educate our clients. Go rant somewhere else. No refuting, no correcting of the statement, nothing. Pouting like a child. So here I go. I say, obviously not. I say, obviously not. What you put out was completely inaccurate. I've been on Wall Street for almost 15 years and used to own an investment bank. We were direct lenders. We syndicated financing, did IPOs, LBOs, M&As, etc. You are not talking to someone who doesn't know this stuff inside out. You lack the credentials, experience, and background to be having this discussion. And that is obvious, right? So he comes back again, dude, shut up. You were not on Wall Street. And we, and, and no, we are not lying. Now, clearly this guy hasn't done his homework. Had he have done his homework before he made that comment, right, he would have figured out already that actually I have been on Wall Street, am on Wall Street, used to own an investment bank, and actually have the credentials. Like, I'm not... There's no cap here. Like, so, you know, he walked himself into a situation. So, of course, he's, he, we, we go back and forth. This is another one of his comments. I'll school you any day of the week on business and credit. Go try someone else. So, you know, I corrected his statement about not being on Wall Street. We corrected that and put out the, the designations that I hold. Uh, and, and, and this continues for a while, right? And, and you can go read all of this for yourself, but in the end, right? In the end, this is where we end up. So eventually I got to the point to where I didn't even want to, even want to go back because I didn't want to go back and forth anymore because someone that, you know, does a lot of blah, blah and does childish things is someone that should not be dealt with. But at the end of the day, right? He makes another comment. Oh, you leaving? Thought you write me another chapter in your school of accomplishments. Now look. Now here we go. Here's the thing, right? Now he told me in some of the comments, right, that I could pull up to Atlanta, Georgia anytime, and he would school me on credit, this, that, and the third, right? So me, right? I don't need to pull up to Atlanta, Georgia. I don't need to do that. 
you putting out false information to over 200,000 people on social media. So if you can school me, then why don't we do it this way? Check it out, right? This is how I come back. I said, I mean, while you're talking hot about pulling up to Georgia and all of that tough Tony, I do ha I I'll do you one better. I'll pull up on live anytime and we can see what it is in front of your entire following. What's good? Now the story goes, uh, that means I have to hear you talk more about your education and how this is a waste of time. You want to go live? You can pay for the services and see the process in full. I say, yep. I figured you ducked that wreck right there. You really want, you don't really want smoke this way because you know you'll be exposed and embarrassed by a real expert. Game, set, match. The point is proven. Now, if they listen to you, it's on them. I'll holla at you, clown. So, now, let's walk into this, right? Let's talk about this. Because this is really important. What happened here is really, really important, right? Listen, first and foremost, if you got knowledge like you claim you got and someone is challenging that knowledge and you openly make the statement, you can pull up, I'll school you any day of the week and they come for you with some pop up on the live or, or uh, uh, pop up on live and let's see what, 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 what we know, right? When they do that. Yo, you're supposed to accept that challenge. Challenge accepted immediately. Why? Because if you really know what you're talking about, right? If you really know what you're talking about, if you really know what you're doing, if you are the expert that you purport yourself to be, right? Then at the end of the day, you should be able to defend your position from any detractor and you should have the knowledge you should be well researched enough. You should have the experience to where you can not only defend your position, but direct people to places that are third parties and credible to be able to validate your position. Me, right? I'm going to tell you straight up. I pray thee for someone to try me in that same way. Talking about some, I said something that was inaccurate and they're willing to challenge me on it. I pray thee for that. Because, see, one thing about me, I know what I know. I know where my expertise is. I don't open my mouth unless I'm sure, right? I don't open my mouth unless I'm sure. And I make sure that everything I put out is credible, researchable, and validated. It can be validated. That is the sign of an expert. An expert has no problem protecting their credibility, protecting their reputation from anyone that would dare try them with some pop up on the live and let's see. You tell me that all call outs is mandatory when it comes to this right here. I live, breathe and eat and shit this stuff right here. See what I'm saying? I've been doing this for almost 15 years. Yes. Call me out if you want to find out. Because I can back this up. But this is a group that cannot do that. So of course, right? Uh, of course. Because of the fact that this went down the way it went down. I decided, see that's the thing. You don't have to accept my call out. I have a live too. My live button works just fine. I'm still going to shame you and embarrass you. That is what is going to happen. I'm just going to do it on my platform and use it as a teachable moment to teach our community how to vet people before they spend money with them. And how a social media following does not equate to expertise. It doesn't. I'm sorry, it does not. And you are seeing that right now, firsthand. Over 200,000 followers don't know what the hell they're talking about. Come on now, make it make sense. Make it make sense. So me, of course, you know me, I do my due diligence. I do my vetting. You know how I get down, right? So first of all, so the name of the company that's pushing this out, right? 
Because what they're really doing is using their their platform to try to get customers to funnel them to a company called RNK Wealth Development, where this guy that was trying to talk to me, who, by the way, is only 26 years old, 26 years old. I've been doing this for almost 15 years, even 10 years ago. He was only 16. He was still trying to figure out life while I was doing cross border transactions. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. So, you know, but anyway, they they funnel they, they funnel everyone to this company called RK Wealth Development, right? And so of course me, I did my due diligence. So I pulled them up. So of course I pull up the business. So let's go through it together, right? Because this is what I want y'all to learn how to do. I want y'all to learn how to do your research, right? Before you spend any money with these people, I want you to learn how to do your research. This is so important. Like, don't let these followers, this, this Instagram clout, don't let none of this cost you your money. Don't go wasting money on stuff that you shouldn't be wasting money on. Don't let people make you the fool. Don't let people take advantage of you, right? So I went ahead, right? And I did the due diligence just so I could use it as a teachable moment. I love this. I love this, right? Check it out, right? Boom. This is RK Wealth Development. Immediately, once we begin to look at their website, we'll just go with the fact that it's trash, trash, trash. And the bigger challenge here that you notice, right? The website's trash. But look at for the pay, this is their homepage. They have no real information here. Nothing. Couple of basic sentences about individuals and business can invest and grow their money by accessing our fast, our vast network of experienced business people and a large array of different businesses. Who are these businesses? Where are they? But okay. Let's just leave that alone. They have an about us. Let's go to the about us. One of the things you got to do, I'm sorry, we're going to go to our staff, right? Our agents. We're going to go there. Now, let me talk to y'all before we go through this part right here, because this part is funny. It's funny. You'll see it in a second. But look, check this out, right? Before you give money to someone, you need to know who they are. Who are they? What is their background and experience? Do they have a sufficient background to be having this discussion with you? Who are they? Or do they inspire confidence with their own backgrounds, their own credentials, their own knowledge? Do they have the background to even be getting your money? So let's explore, right? Okay, here we go. There are four people that work here. See? Four. Four, 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 four. But let's go through each one of their backgrounds. Let's start there, right? So the, purport, the purported founder and owner of this nonsense is a guy by the name of Ramin Rock Foreman. We're going to start with him, right? Let's go there. What does it say about Ramin Rock Foreman? Overseas national operations for R&K wealth development with individual with which includes strategic business units, R&K brokerage services, Harrison Lock trading, R&K real estate investment and our business operations consulting arm which promotes financial education and literacy, personal and business credit restoration and acquisitions. Oversees the operation growth of a small Chicago land rehab company to a multi-level conglomerate whose core business is residential real, real estate investment to include Rothschild, Klein, general contracting, and property management. Was instrumental in the development and implementation of our core business strategy, REVCM, real estate value chain management. This strategy enables us to thrive in the most challenging areas while creating jobs and revitalizing communities. Okay, one of the first things that should jump out with you about this situation, right? When you do due diligence on this situation, when, and by the way, this is what he looked like, right? Now I'm trying to understand, this is a little basic stuff, right? This is supposed to be a professional photo for your website. Yo, is are those dressers back there? No, those are stairs. Those are stairs. Where you at? Yo, what are we doing here? Anyway, 
Let, let, let's leave that. We ain't gonna talk about a suit or nothing like that. We ain't, we're not gonna talk about any of that, right? Because that looks like a, uh, you know, that, that suit shirt right there. That look like the shirt and tie combo. You know what I mean? From, uh, from uh, you know, the, the $99, $0.99 executive suit place. But we're gonna leave that alone, right? We're not even gonna deal with that. Because this is the guy that's supposed to be, you know, guiding y'all into the future and talking all this big money talk, right? And I'm not saying you got to look like it, but these are professional photos, right? I mean, you show up for the professional photo. Now, you show up and you show out now for those, right? But anyway, let's leave that, right? Because that's not really important. The way a man dresses does not necessarily, you know, demonstrate his expertise or lack thereof, right? I, I just want to put that out there. However, what should be concerning in his biography is number one, and I pulled his background. I want you to know I pulled this background, right? All of these companies that are listed are companies that he started, right? These are all LLCs that he formed and incorporated. There is no mention of any type of background from anywhere in the financial services industry that would bolster his ability to be able to be having discussions about financial literacy with our community and charging people to 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 for these these informations there is nothing that 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 mentions that in fact you know he says things like uh uh overseas operations and growth in a small chicago land rehab company what's the name of the rehab company we don't know because he never puts the name out there right was instrumental in development and implementation of our car business uh, 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 strategy, REVCM, right? What is that? There is nothing here, right? There's a lot of fancy words, a lot of fancy titles, you know, Rothschild, Klein, General Contracting. Oh, this sounds official until you do the due diligence and realize it's just an LLC that he incorporated and a name that he picked, Right? Nothing in this background speaks to anything, anything, any experience in the financial service industry outside of businesses he set up himself. There's no mention of an educational background, no mention of any credentials. There's no mention of any of this stuff. So where is his expertise? Where did he get his knowledge from? What is his real experience outside of starting some LLCs? Where is it? It doesn't exist. And that's the problem. Let's move on to another gentleman, uh, uh, another member of the quote unquote staff, right? And we'll see this fall apart really quick. So the next person is Kevin E. Jerome, right? Here we go. Let's pull up Kevin. This is Kevin, which is, by the way, the guy that was going back and forth with me and trying to have a discussion with me on social media. Yo, Kevin don't have nothing. Nothing. There's nothing there. Who is Kevin? What is his background and experience? This is their company website. You are listed there. Where's your bio? It doesn't exist. Look, no bio, nothing, nothing, nothing. Listen, no company of repute, no company of repute, no reputable, credible company is going to have someone that is a staff member, listed staff member without a bio. If they're listing staff members and they got pictures, they got bios. That's what credible companies do. This is a non-credible situation. That's mad sketchy. In no way around it, right? But of course, I pulled his background. That's how I found out his he's 26 years old. The E in his name, just because I know he's probably going to see this because I'm going to tag it. So the E in his name actually stands for Emmanuel. So obviously I pulled his background. Like, if I know that. Like, let's be clear here, right? 26 years old. He's a kid. Nothing in his background speaks to any type of financial education or experience whatsoever. Let's be clear here. But let's move on. Let's move on to the next. Let's move on to the next. The next 
person that is a staff member is Patrice Kelly. Patrice, come on down. You the next contestant on the Exposure Show. Here we go. Now, let's look at Patrice, right? Now, this says, my career started as a business consultant for a small to medium-sized business in the Cleveland, Ohio area. What's the name of the business? What's the name of the business? What's the name of the business? We don't know. So these are just words. They mean nothing because we can't tell where you came from. I obtained my marketing degree, not a business degree, a marketing degree from Dyke College, right? The same school as John D. Rockefeller. Okay, so you put that out there to give yourself some credibility because you went to a school that one of the Rockefellers went to. So that's supposed to make you what? Credible by association? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. But she put that out there to try to boost her bona, her, her, her bona fides, right? But, but let's walk through that some more. After college, I began, now remember, she said she started a, she, she started her career as a business consultant for a small to medium sized business. But wait, the second paragraph contradicts that. After college, I began working for the Call and Post a black-owned newspaper as a general reporter. I then transitioned into writing for business, trade, and association journals, including Black NBA Magazine and Black Meetings and Tourism. But wait, I thought she started her career in business consulting as a business consultant for a small and medium-sized business. She just told on herself in the second paragraph. That's not true at all. She's a journalist. What drew me to R&K Wealth Development was the opportunity to learn and grow my expertise in wealth building. Plus, it offered the chance to enhance people's lives through financial education and literacy. Since I know the benefit having used services myself, I wanted to share those benefits with others. Aw, isn't that cute? Oh, isn't that cute? She played an emotional card at the end. Oh, but but she was a client of the services before she was an employee. She has no background in financial literacy, financial uh, industry, financial services industry, nothing. She's a journalist. No background in this. Yeah, she's supposed to tell you how to fix your credit, how to develop business credit, how to develop businesses and do all of that stuff, but she ain't got no background in it. She's a journalist. She good at writing the words, but she can't even get her story straight on her own bio. One paragraph says she started her career in, in business consulting. The next paragraph says, after graduating from college, I worked for a newspaper. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. But now look, check this out. We're going to go to the last one. We're going to go to the last one. The last contestant up from you have up for uh, the next contestant on the show you have been exposed is Mary Johnson. Let's take a look at old Mary. Mary had a little lamb. Here we go. Oh, look. You can't even open Mary. Now, this is a website issue. You can't even click through to open Mary, but that's okay. You know, we're going to go to our staff. I noticed that earlier, so I figured out the workaround for that. Because, again, website is trashly developed. So, you know, even some of their links don't even click through like they're supposed to. Okay, let's read about Mary Johnson now. Because Mary had a little lamb. It says, my career began in retail to support my five children, including two beautiful sets of twins. Aw, so you worked at like Kmart or like Walmart or somewhere like that. That's what it means to work in retail. So you were stacking shelves and, and, and being a cashier? As a single mother and domestic abuse survivor, I began my second career in over-the-road trucking. All of this stuff about, you know, domestic abuse, I feel for that. That's sad. But at the end of the day, that ain't got nothing to do with financial services and nothing to do with y'all giving her y'all money. Do not fall for these emotional traps that people try to set up for you. 
Many folks said a single mother or five couldn't do it, but I proved them wrong. All my children attended college or have successful military careers. That's awesome. That ain't got nothing to do with financial literacy or a background in financial services. It talks nothing of your skills and experience in this space. Why a little country girl, I became a credit agent with RK Wealth Development was because folks said I couldn't. I proved them wrong again. Again, RK Wealth Development is this company that we're exposing right here. None of this crap that she's writing has anything to do with any expertise or lends any credibility or credence to why she should be consulting you on anything in fi financial services related. It was important for me to build a legacy for my children, grandchildren, and one day great-grandchildren. Here we go with the legacy talk. Sounds like the Jay Morrison line. I love the opportunity to enhance clients' lives through financial education and personal credit restoration. Proving through my clients, actually that says why clients, there's a typo there, uh, that working together, a little country girl from Mississippi can show them how to make their dreams come true. Oh, it's so emotional. It's so emotional. It's so emotional. Oh, she's pulling on the heartstrings. She wants you to mess with her because she's a little old country girl with five children. That's a domestic violence survivor. And she just, you know, she a credit consultant. Yo, that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Sad story. I feel you. I'm glad you overcame domestic violence and abuse. You know, kudos to you. But I'm sorry. That ain't got nothing to do. With this financial services. You talking about dealing with a very sensitive and very important aspect of people's lives. And what you put out there it speaks to no education, no credentials, no background, no nothing. None of these people have experience. None of these people have the credentials. None of these people have the background. But yet they want you to give them your money. Yet they trying to convince you to give them your money. Do not let social media cost you everything you worked so hard for. Do your research. Do your due diligence. Do it. Because if you just take a little bit of time as I did and I demonstrated here, you will see clearly that a lot of these people trying to get your money, even if they got hundreds of thousands of followers, are not people that you should be giving your money to. Period. And this is yet another example of that. This company has no experience, no track record, no credibility, none. Yet they've got over 200,000 followers. And if you just go by what's on their following, and if you decide to work with them because of their following, you will be hustled out of your money. And you will be no better off than when you started. In fact, you'll be worse because you'll be out of the money you spent then. I don't know what they charge for them services, but at the end of the day, it is not worth your money. Do your homework. Do it. Research. Vet. Check, check before you give anybody on social media your money. Pirod. Point blank pirod. That's how this works. Okay? So I just wanted to take the time to uh, have a discussion with y'all about this whole mess right here. You know what I mean? I, I just wanted to take the time to do that. It, it, it needed to happen. Like, I can't, and there's a lot of these that's going to get exposed. As I learn about them, as I find them, as I see the foolery, we're going to use it as another due diligence tool, another due diligence lesson. You know what I mean? We're going to keep this thing right on rolling. You know what I mean? Because this has got to stop in our community. We have got to stop taking advantage of the community. We got to stop letting people take advantage of the community. We have got to stop allowing this to happen and the only way it's going to stop is if our community gets better at due diligence period that's the only way something like this is going 
to stop. And one other thing I want to share. I want you to know right now that every so often you're going to run into a person in this little credit repair, credit management uh, side of the industry that is going to tell you they're a certified credit repair expert, you know, a certified licensed credit restoration manager. Let me tell you something right now so we can kill that right now. There is no certification. There is no credential of any credible, recognized, widely respected uh, standing in the financial services community. None. None. So them little certifications that you see, them little Johnny Come Lately certifications are worth zero. There is nothing, no certification that is widely respected and credible. That as a credit repair agent, credit, you know, management expert, none of that, none of that. But most of them people ain't even took the time to get a piece of paper that ain't worth the paper is printed on. Most of them ain't even took the time to do that. But they calling themselves a credit agent. Hell, if that's the standard to being a credit agent, what I just showed you on this website right here, if that's the standard to be a credit agent, guess what? So anybody who watches my four series, my four part series on credit repair and downloads the letters. I guess they're a credit agent expert too, right? Wrong. You learn how to do it for yourself. You learn some very important things, but it doesn't make you an expert. An expert is someone who spent years and years and years doing something. 10,000 hours, which roughly takes you 10 years to get to. 10,000 hours. At minimum. Doing the same thing day in and day out, getting the education, getting the recognized, reputable credentials, getting the experience by working uh, in, in financial services and working at or credible organizations that 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 can teach you some things. You don't get this overnight. Everybody an expert since COVID started. It's crazy. Now everybody see that it's COVID and everybody sitting at home and they see that you know. Financial services is a trending topic now. You know, that's what's up. Let me jump on and, 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 and throw my little hat into the ring. No, buddy. No. No, sir. You throw your hat in this ring and I find out about it. And I see you putting out bad information. Uh, You will be a contestant on my live. You will be a contestant. I will make an example out of you and I will shame you. So people stay away from you. Anyway, y'all. Listen. I just wanted to share all of that with y'all. Um, it looked like I got a question here. Uh, uh, what credentials should we, okay, what credentials should we look for in a credit repair agent or company? Uh, that, that was a question that just came out. So, you know, I appreciate the question. Uh, so what credentials should you look for? To be honest with you, there are no real credentials in the credit repair business. Like, there are no credible credentials. They don't exist, Right. And so with that in mind, like what you're looking for is experience. You know, when you, first of all, you shouldn't be paying for credit repair from a credit repair agency anyway. This is something that you can do for yourself. You know what I'm saying? For the cost of some stamps and some envelopes. And the time to watch a four part series that I put that out for free for a reason. I think that, you know, credit repair, and restoration and management should be free. This is a basic right to you know, uh, uh, financial freedom, uh, in, in the United States. I believe that should be for free. It's just a basic rite of passage. And so that being the case, I put it out for free. You know, if you want to buy the book as well, feel free. I mean, but at the end of the day, I did a four part series on this and I wrote all the letters for you. All you got to do is populate your information in. So if you're going around spending money on that, I mean, that don't even make no sense. That makes no sense. Shouldn't be paying no credit repair agency thousands of dollars, hundreds of dollars to do something that you can do for yourself for the cost of some stamps and, and, and some envelopes and a little time, you know, four hours of time watching some videos. Let's be clear here. That's real. So I hope that answered that question. So listen, uh, you know, I just said everything I'm going to say on this topic. You know what I mean? I appreciate y'all as always for listening to your boy. As always, feel free to like, subscribe, 
follow and share this information with anybody that you believe can benefit because the more people whose eyes we get on this situation, the more people can benefit. You know what I mean? As always, we hashtag get real woke around here. You know what I mean? As always, you know, I come on these lives and talk to y'all. Hashtag for the free. And, uh, you know, as always, I appreciate y'all. You know, feel free to reach out anytime. I'm not always uh, going to be able to respond right away, but eventually I get back to you. Um, if it's something major and it requires one-on-one -on -one consulting, feel free to hit the uh, book now button. Feel free to book an assessment. As always, check out the books I've read because, uh, I'm sorry, the books I've written. Uh, feel free to check those out because, I mean, again, at the end of the day, I mean, that'll save you a lot of time and effort and energy right there and, and, and give you a, a lot more knowledge than a lot of these, these fake-ass gurus around here got. And that's real. Uh, so anyway, y'all, y'all enjoy y'all day. Enjoy y'all night. Have a great rest of the week. And I'll see y'all next time. I'm out!